Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And I've just woken up and decided that I'm going to do a little plant chores style vlog video today. I'm also really sorry about the piles of mess behind me. I'm in the process of potentially moving out. I will talk to you about that as we get into the video. But yeah, I'm going to be doing some repotting, show you some plant updates, talk and show, show and talk a little bit about pollination as well, because I know quite a few of you have been asking about that. Ugh, my brain hasn't quite woken up yet and I'm struggling to speak. But yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I haven't got dressed yet because I thought it made sense to do some of the messier repotting bits before I showered. So you've got me in my, my ferret top for now. Shout out to my ferret family, you know who you are. <laughs> So I thought I would first give you an update on the Anthurium clarinervium seeds that I planted, I think about three months ago now or something like that. This is the biggest one and it's doing absolutely amazingly. I'm so, so, so happy with it. They're all sprouting and they're all doing well, but this one is definitely the best, the best established one out of all of them so far. I've got one in my cabinet there that's got one leaf and one of them's actually still in the prop box just because it was way slower than the others, but this one here is doing so well. I still am so interested in whether it's pure clarinervium or if it's maybe a potential hybrid. So as always, if you have any theories, do let me know in the comments. But it's got a new little leaf coming there as well. And I feel like they're getting bigger every time they come up. That was the first leaf and then that was that one. And now we're on that. So I'm hoping it's going to be quite well established fairly quickly. It's growing very fast. The next update I will give you, and I haven't actually looked at these yet myself. These are the Anthurium forgetii seeds that I put in sphagnum moss, um, I want to say about three weeks ago. And I'm pretty sure I've kind of just been trying to spy through the cling film, but it's not always that clear. So I'll take a look and I will show you how they're doing. So I don't know if, I can't really tilt the box that well. I might need to put some clips in of this, but they are, by the looks of it, all rooting. I've got six of them in there and one of them looks like it's got a little sprout coming. So I'm really, really happy about that. They've been on my heat mat under grow lights and it's just been very warm in this room anyway, which always helps the germination process. But yeah, they're doing well. And I know I've been saying for absolutely ages that I would talk about how you get the seeds for anthuriums to grow them from seed. So I thought I would quickly go through that. I've got two of my clarinerviums here. So I did actually take a video of when I pollinated these ones recently. So I will show you that in a minute, but I'll very briefly explain. So you obviously need to wait for these things here to pop up, which are inflorescences. And I've actually got another one already coming up. Ooh on this plant just, oh, you can kind of see it, just there, that's a new one coming up. Um, but once they produce an inflorescence, they'll basically start in the female stage, and that's when you'll be able to see kind of droplets of sap, it's called stigmatic fluid, and that will be covering the spadex here, which is this bit. And that is when they are receptive, and that's when you can pollinate them. But if you don't have pollen to pollinate them, then unfortunately you're going to have to wait and probably store the pollen unless you've got two active plants, which luckily I did this time. I've never been that lucky before. But they usually stay in this female receptive stage from anywhere from about four days to a week in my experience. And as I say, if you've got pollen or you're able to pollinate them at that point, then that is great. But if you don't, after they've been in the female stage, you'll notice the stigmatic fluid won't be being produced anymore. And instead it will be producing pollen. And that is, if you want to pollinate in the future, what you should collect. I've actually got some that I collected in tinfoil just here. And again, I'll insert a clip of how I did that. But if you do have two that are one in the female stage, one in the male stage at the same time, then you can essentially take the pollen from one, transfer it onto the other. And hopefully in a few months time, you will start to get some nice berries, which you can then pick and plant and turn into new little anthuriums. It was really, really annoying with my ones. So basically you want to choose quite a mature plant on the whole because you want it to have a good energy reserves because producing berries does take a lot of energy in the plants. And this one obviously is quite big and this would have been the perfect one to pollinate. But annoyingly, and I've taken a risk here, this is the one that was in the female stage at the time that this one was in the male stage. So I could have just collected the pollen from both of them and saved it, but I took the risk and I have pollinated this plant and it's only actually got three leaves at the moment. So 
I could risk doing some serious damage to this plant, but it was kind of more like a trial and error thing. I don't know if it's going to work. I did the pollination, I think about three, four weeks ago now, and I'm kind of kidding myself that I can see bulging already. I think it's too soon to tell, but I'll keep you updated with these. And as I say, I'll pop a clip in of me pollinating them to show you exactly how it's done in case I didn't explain that well enough. So the plants that I need to repot today, the first one is my Pilea peperomioides. It is just not in a very good quality soil. It's not the fact that I think it's outgrown its pots, like I can't see any roots and the soil still feels pretty airy, but it just, I don't know. I can just tell that it's not as kind of good as it could be. It's a bit, it goes a bit hard and the water doesn't always absorb very well when I water it. So I thought I would repot this one. I'm not going to drastically move up a pot size because as I say, I don't think its roots actually need a much bigger size, but I'm just going to go with this one, which I coloured in a while ago and made to look a little bit prettier. So that's what we're going with. I will just tilt the camera down and I will, I guess, give you a little life update. So if you follow me on Instagram, or I guess if you've watched my other kind of repotty chatty videos, you will know that, oh wow, actually, look at those roots and also the little pups coming up here. Yay. But yeah, if you follow me on Instagram or have watched my other videos, you will probably know that I've been getting ready to move out. And it's just been, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a mission. I won't go into all of the details because it's very, very, very boring. And honestly, it's not even worth talking about. But I was pretty certain I was moving out. I got incredibly eager and literally packed, ready to go. And then everything fell through and it was like, nope, it's not going to happen. And I was so, so, so gutted. The place that I found, it's not huge, but it's so perfect for me, Yoli, all of my plants. It's literally got to the like living space area has two massive walls that are all window so my plants would have been so 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 happy there and so it was almost definitely a no-go and i was like okay right i'm gonna stay packed i'm just gonna accept the fact that it's gonna happen soon so i'm gonna just stay packed and now it's kind of looking like it might happen again so i'm really i don't really know why where i am with all of it i'm i'm packed ready to go and accepting the fact that I could potentially be moving in a matter of weeks or I might have to wait another six months. So luckily I hadn't packed any of my plants. <laughs> that would have been a nightmare. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of living out of boxes at the moment and I just, I really don't want to have to unpack. I don't know if any of you know, but like once you've got ready to go and kind of like mentally prepared yourself for that, the thought of then having to be like, right, well, I'll just put everything back to how it was. is just not a good one. And as, as some of you know, I am living at home at the moment. I moved back during lockdown, um, back with my mum. And I, I honestly, I can't complain at all. I'm so lucky to be able to be here with my plants, my dog, all of that sort of stuff. It's absolutely amazing. But space is just a little bit limited and because Yoli's so bad with cats and my mum's got a cat it just means that she has to be pretty much in the same room as me at all times she's just sat watching me repot now so so yeah I think we're we're ready to make the move now but we're just <laughs> holding on and hoping that it will all turn out all right so I'm trying to stay positive and just hope that it will happen soon and if it doesn't it doesn't Oh, for goodness sake. So it's got the, it's not mesh actually, but hang on, I'll see if you can see. Around the roots, it's got one of those little things holding the roots in place, which means that they are not able to grow properly, which is so annoying. I just need to grab some scissors so I can cut it off. I really think when people do this around the roots of plants, they should make it with something biodegradable, not kind of like plasticky stuff so that the roots aren't permanently stuck in that position because it just affects, oh, and it's, it's stuck around one of the little pups. I'm going to have to try and cut it out very carefully. Yeah, it just affects the health of your plants and it means that it's not able to absorb all the nutrients that it needs from the soil and all of that stuff. But hopefully now, after doing this, this plant will just kind of spring into action and be a lot happier. There we go. Freedom for the roots. Yay. Yoli's overheating over there. I don't know why she does it. She will always go and lie right in the biggest patch of sunshine and then get really, really warm to the point that you have to actually go and move her out of it because she's so hot. And why are you there? Why don't you go in the shade, you silly dog? Why don't you go in the shade? 
Also, another little update is that I've just joined Patreon. I am doing more planty videos, planty content stuff over there. If any of you fancy joining, then you're more than welcome to. I'll pop all the details in the description box below. If you don't, then that's absolutely fine too. I will still be here on YouTube. But yes, I thought I would just throw that out there because it's it's awkward and I had to say it somehow, so I've just said it. Now we're moving on, we're gonna pot the plant. Oh damn it, I've just knocked off a really nice leaf and mm, I don't think that's going to be propagatable because it hasn't got any of the stem on it. How annoying. I might stick it in water anyway, but I highly doubt, highly doubt that's going to work. The other thing I need to just do quickly is add some water to my potting mix just because I've spoken about the perlite thing before and how it's so bad for you to breathe in. I only found out recently how bad exactly it was, but because it's really dry in here, I can feel I can feel myself breathing it in. So I'm gonna go add some water to this to get rid of the dust. Right, this is now slightly muddier and messier, but it's it's better for the lungs. I don't think I said either, this is the mix I'm using. It's just houseplant soil, perlite, orchid bark and a little bit of pond thrown in as well just because I had about a scoop left in a bag so I thought I'd mix some of that in there. There we go that is that one all potted up and as I say I'm really hoping that this one I will now notice some really significant growth in just because whenever they've got those things around their roots it seems to really really hinder them and they can only kind of grow to a certain point. Oh I need to move her out of the sun she's panting like crazy. Come on you silly girl. I just moved her out of the sun and as soon as I did, she just went straight back. So I think what I'm gonna need to do, I will repot this plant and then I'm gonna have to take her out for a walk because it feels like it's gonna be really warm today. And if it's too hot, it's not gonna be any good for walking her. So I will do this one quickly and then we will do that. So this is my spider plant, my variegated spider plant. And as you can see, it does have roots coming out of the bottom. This one has been such a crazy fast grower, but I think I'm gonna, Move it up a couple of pot sizes. I think I'm going to go to that just because, as I say, it's growing like crazy at the moment. So I'm going to just try not to damage any of the little roots down here too much. Wow, yeah, those are some insane roots. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This one was a teeny tiny propagation this time last year. I'll put a clip in actually, but it has just grown so, 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 so quickly. Also, it's Yodi's birthday really, really soon. We don't have an exact date for when it is because she's a rescue, so they didn't know exactly, but we were told beginning of May, so her birthday could literally be like now. I know I joked in another video that I might do like a Yodi birthday vlog, but maybe I'll do like a birthday thing for her today. Maybe I'll make her some treats. I'm gonna make her some treats. I think I will finish potting this plant up, take her out for a walk, and then maybe when I get back before I carry on doing planty things, I will do a little, do a little birthday celebration for her. Why not? Why not? I know everybody wants to see that. No, just me? Oh my goodness, these roots are amazing. I feel like once this plant's in a bigger pot, it's just gonna go absolutely crazy. Look at them. Whoa. Right, I'm not gonna bother getting the rest of the soil off because it actually hasn't been in soil for that long. It's just growing really quickly. I think it will still hold some nutritional value, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it up in this pot. Because of the leaves of this plant, it's so hard not to pot them into the soil as well. I'm having to try and hold them all up as I go. There we go. Oh my goodness, having it in the bigger pot just automatically makes it look like a much bigger plant, if that makes sense. It doesn't look like a little kind of propagation anymore. It looks like a huge full plant and I love it. Yay. Right, okay, what I need to do now, I'm gonna get Yoli out of the sunshine. I'm gonna go have a shower, get dressed, take her out for a walk and then think about maybe cooking for her. <laughs> How sad am I? Cooking for her when we get back and then we can carry on with planty things. Also, my cabinet humidity today is absolutely insane. It was at 90 when I first came up before I opened the door and yeah, it's still at 82 and everything in there is doing very well. I haven't even had my humidifier running, to be honest. I haven't run it in about a week just because I found a cheaper option is to just fill these with boiling water, get the fan there and just let it all circulate up. But everything's doing, everything's doing really well.
So before I left the house, I was having a chat with one of my plant friends who was asking me if I was going to be doing World Naked Gardening Day, which is tomorrow at the time of filming this. And if you don't know what World Naked Gardening Day is, it's pretty much in the name. It's just people celebrating being naked in nature, taking pictures naked with their plants, with their gardens, all that sort of stuff. And I've never done it before. I completely celebrate people that do, but I've never personally done it. But I've just been walking and as I do, I've just been going into my own little world and completely overthinking things. And it's just, it's made me realize how, how much self-acceptance and body acceptance I have got from plant care, as weird as that might sound to some of you. Um, and I guess maybe I should put a little trigger warning in here or something like that. Uh, if anybody needs that, I will put a timestamp there <laughs> so you can skip if you want to. But when I was in my, I guess, very early 20s, I went through a really, really, really dark patch for various reasons. A lot of things in my life were going on, a lot of things had happened. And I basically was just being incredibly unkind to my body. I was doing all sorts of horrible, horrible things to it. And I was putting all sorts of nasty things into it and dealing with the pain I was feeling in in a way that wasn't healthy at all. And I basically lost all of any confidence that I already had in my body from before that. And I don't know. I think a lot of it just kind of, part of it played into the wanting to wanting to appear to have the perfect image and all that sort of stuff, which is fed to us by the media. But this went a lot deeper than that. and. And yeah, I was in a very bad place for quite a long time with it. And really thinking about it, since I've since I've found houseplants, since I've found planty planty life as a way of self-care, and I've said before, for me it's like meditation. I get so much out of it. I honestly I can't even explain. I probably don't have to explain to most of you because you probably know exactly what I mean. But since I've found that and it's been my daily grounding and allows me to be with my thoughts in a very healthy, positive way, even if my thoughts aren't particularly positive at the time. It has just, it's given me so much. And for, and for that reason, I feel like, I feel like, Yelly, good girl. I feel like I'm having kind of a new look on World Naked Gardening Day. And I, I feel like I wanna get involved in it. <laughs> and I think it would be a good, challenge to myself as well in terms of self-acceptance and kind of pairing it with the thing that's been oh, sorry my arm's going to sleep pairing it with the thing that has been the most powerful healer for me and just yeah I don't really I'm also incredibly out of breath because I'm very unfit um I don't quite know how to put it really but plant care has just it's opened up a whole new dimension in my life and has I need to switch arms has brought me to the place where I feel that after many, many, many years of whether it's teenage things and just going through what I think a lot of people go through in terms of self-acceptance and not liking the way you look and all that sort of stuff, it's really brought me to a place where on the whole, not always, but on the whole, I do sit a lot more comfortably in my own skin now. And, and yeah, so... I think I'm going to get back and I think I'm going to take some naked pictures. I won't be putting that in the vlog though. Another thing to walk and chat with you about, because this is quite fun, is a lot of you have asked before why Yoli is on a lead and if she ever comes off the lead, I do muzzle her sometimes as well, as you might have seen in other videos, I think one of my garden plant, house plant, garden center tour things. Oh my God, what's the name of, what's the name of that series? I don't know. Um, so basically she, as, as you know, she's a rescue dog. She is sometimes an angel. She's an angel around the house and she's on the whole very good, but she is quite reactive with other dogs. She has a tendency to, she's never learned to play basically. So she can launch in and, not that she's ever hurt another dog, but she can be a little bit aggressive, um, which again is something that she's she's a grown adult dog, although there's certain things that I can do to kind of help make her feel more secure. A lot of the time it is just kind of the case of, I want to be a responsible dog owner. I want to make sure that everyone around me is safe and feels safe and 
I am taking control of my dog. So what I do, there's a place really close to where I live where, oh my goodness, this is why you should tie my hair up. Uh, a place really close to where I live that has um, like an enclosed little woodland and field space and stuff like that. So I take her there most weeks and she has a really good off the lead runabout in a safe environment where we know we're not gonna run into other dogs or things that might be um, a bit alarming for her. Uh, but on the whole, if I'm walking out and about and there's other dog owners with lots of other dogs, which today there are, I'm avoiding all of them right now, <laughs> I do tend to keep her on the lead just because it's it's safer, basically. Um, she's got an eight metre lead and she has a good runabout and I usually have a run with her. It's funny though, because I thought when I get a dog, I was like, God, I'm going to be so social. I'm going to go out and meet all the other dog walkers and it's going to be so great. Little did I know what a nightmare she'd be, but we love her. She's great. <laughs> so I'm back from the dog walk and I've looked up some dog treat recipes. And the one that I found that I think I'm going to go for just because it sounds so, so, so easy is basically just blended up dog biscuits, egg, and cheese and then you bake it. So I'm gonna give it a go. Uh oh, an egg just splattered on the floor. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like cook it or what I'm gonna do. Also, I'm sure I've showed you heads before. Hello, Bibi. This is my mum's dog and Jolie's best friend. He's so cute, aren't you? I mean, it's not quite master chef level, but I, I don't think she'll mind too much. So while Yoli's biscuits are baking, I'm just gonna go around and just check my plants and do a little bit of watering because I did do a load a couple of days ago, but I do feel like, cause this weather is so, so, so warm, there's probably gonna be some that need doing. And I water in a really weird way. I know most people just take their watering can round to their plants and water them where they are. I mean, I've got a lot of plants, but I personally, I'll use a washing up bowl and I'll put a towel out to just absorb some of the water, like help them drain afterwards. And I always bring them all over to me. I think just because I can get a better, a better overview of them then, I can kind of have a look and see if any of them need pruning or if there's any pests or anything like that. I just, I personally always do it this way and I really enjoy doing it this way. I know a lot of people are just like, oh, that's effort. Um, but yeah, also this is what I was gonna ask. So I've had this variegated monstera, I propagated this one a while ago and it's had this little plant growing in the soil for ages and I've just kind of let it be, let it do its thing. And it suddenly started flowering. I don't know if you can, yeah, it's got a really nice, it almost looks like a pansy or something, but the leaves don't look particularly, oh, there we go, pansy-like. So if anyone knows what that little plant is, let me know. that new leaf, how beautiful is that? I love new anthurium leaves. Also, variegated monstera update. So I was watching back one of my videos that I filmed literally a year ago, I think pretty much to the day, and I was showing you various plants and I was like, oh, it'd be cool if I kind of did a like, this this much growth in a year type thing. And I will, oh, oh, okay, there's a wasp in here and there's a dragonfly in here. Hold that thought. Okay, I can't get the wasp out, so I'm just gonna have to be aware of the fact that he's here and not walk into him. Um, 
So yes, I was gonna do a kind of plant comparison. No, I need him gone, I need him gone, I can't do it. There's a window right there. Go out of it. Okay, the wasp is gone. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> oh yeah, um, update, plant updates one year on and I don't know where I was going with this now. Anyway, I will put in a clip of what my variegated monstera looks like this time last year and show you her growth over this last year because it has been crazy. Literally, she's touching the ceiling now and if I am able to move to my new place, my new flat, it's got really high ceilings and it would be perfect because I could just let her carry on climbing. But if not, I think I'm probably gonna have to give her a chop back soon because there's gonna be there's gonna be no room for her. But yeah, that was a very anticlimactic thing to mention in the video now. I feel like that I had a better thought going there before the wasp threw me off course. I've also recently started using predatory mites as firstly a pest treatment for one of my plants over there that has got spider mites at the moment, but also just as a pest preventative because I've heard it's really good. And I've got them, I've got quite a few sachets. I'll grab one and show you actually, but I've got quite a few sachets in my cabinet over here. And I keep picking up plants and thinking that they've got pests on them and then realizing it's just a little mite, he's meant to be there. Yeah, so they look like that and they basically just slowly release mites as and when they're needed over I think about four weeks and I've got to say so far it seems to be working well and it seems to be really doing the trick with my massive alocasia portadora which if you follow me on Patreon you will have seen because I did show you the other day but I will I'll give you some more updates on her when she's a little bit more stable because she's not in the best way at the moment. This is one of the other Anthurium clarinervium babies that I was telling you about earlier. And obviously it is doing well. It's got a second leaf on the way as well, but compared to the first one, it's just, it doesn't compare. This one's teeny in comparison. Ah, one of the main leaves on my Anthurium silver blush as well is turning. So I think I should probably chop that back. Oh, however, there is a new little growth point there, which is good. Oh good, because that was a lovely leaf. I'm sad to lose that one. I've just been through to the kitchen and I'm not gonna lie, Yoli's biscuits smell amazing. <laughs> they smell really, really nice. I don't think I'll be trying them, but they do smell very good. The only reason I haven't chopped this leaf right back is just because when they produce inflorescences, which this one is probably way too young to even think about doing, but when they do, they produce them through the kind of base of the petiole just there. So I kind of, I mean, I probably should just chop it all the way back, but I always just think if there's a chance, I'll I'll leave some space for it to grow further down the line. Oh, another plant comparison from that video. So I showed you my Peperomia frost that I just started propagating about this time last year. And you can see now it's absolutely ginormous. It's got, I mean, it's leaves are just huge. Look at that. I love the colour of this plant so, so, so much. It's just so beautiful. This is the little philodendron marmy that I got from the plant swap and I had three leaves at the time that I got it and I suspected it might have pests. I'm, I'm not convinced, I don't know, it's still in kind of isolation. I've got it far over that side of the room with some predatory mites next to it. So I'm hoping if there is anything nasty, then they will be gone soon. But I'm just, I'm keeping an eye on it. As you can see, I've chopped back the other two leaves because they just weren't looking good. And that is what it is currently looking like. <laughs> And these two, although they're in basically pure pond and they do have a little reservoir of their own, just because they're planted quite high up in the pot because it's such a big pot and I didn't want to overwhelm the root system, I do still give them a little water at the top as well, just when I can feel it's a little bit dry. And actually, I've got to say, having the soil in there with it is actually a really, a really good indicator because I can tell by sticking my finger into it, whereas with pond, you can't really tell. You've just got to rely on the fact that the roots are feeding. I 
I'm also still due to swap a cutting of this plant, which is an Altenanthera, with someone from the plant swap. So I'm going to send it out to her next week when the evenings are a little bit warmer. But look how beautiful that is. It's getting so gorgeous and it grows really quickly as well. I mean, when I first got this, it was only about there and it's branching out as well as up. It's just, it's so pretty. Another one year on plant update that I have shown you so many times before, but it's just amazing to see how far it's come in such a short space of time. I'll pop the clip in of it from last year when it was a teeny tiny plant that I just propagated from a cutting and then I will show you it now. <laughs> Look at the size of her. She's just absolutely huge. And she's also got another leaf coming as well. She's only given me that one in the last week or something. She's already got another massive, massive, massive one coming. Yeah, she's ginormous. Right, so I think those are the main ones that needed doing for now. As I say, I'm, I'm monitoring them a lot at the moment because this room gets so, so, so unbelievably hot. It gets up to kind of 32 degrees, which to be honest is too hot for them, but I don't have another alternative. So I have done the ones that are in desperate need of a drink today. I have done a big water very recently. So I think I will go and get Yoli's treats out of the oven and let them cool down. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> they do actually smell really, really delicious. We can have one more, seeing as it's your birthday. You're a happy girl. I really hope you enjoyed this little plant vlog day. I realise it wasn't perhaps as planty as I had planned, but if you did enjoy it, then let me know and I will do more videos like this. Oh, you finished that already? Have you finished that already? Was that nice? Oh. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next video.